Everyone carries a shadow, and the less it is embodied in the individual's conscious life, the blacker and denser it is if an inferiority is conscious. One always has a chance to correct it, but if it is repressed and isolated from consciousness, it never gets corrected and is liable to burst forth suddenly in a moment of unawareness at all counts. It forms an unconscious snag supping our most well-me intentions, Carl Jung, talks about two types of shadows. The personal shadow, the unknown dark side of our personality, and the collective shadow, the unknown dark side of society, starting with the personal shadow. It simply means the thing a person has no wish to be. It represents unknown or little-known attributes and qualities of the ego. It is the sum of all those unpleasant qualities we like to hide from ourselves. The shadow contains inferiorities which everybody has but prefers not to know about. They seem weak, socially unacceptable, or even evil. The shadow is most visible when one is in the grip of anxiety or other emotions, or under the influence of alcohol in a friendly conversation, someone might unexpectedly make a hostile comment when we refuse to accept what we despise within our ourselves. We tend to project those qualities onto others. One can become familiar with their shadow and be somewhat aware of it maintaining it under the control of the ego. However, many individuals completely refuse to acknowledge their shadow, resulting in the ego being unaware of shadow behavior and unable to manage it in such cases. The shadow becomes autonomous and can manifest through inexplicable moods. Irritability and cruelty, while often seen as negative, the shadow can also have positive aspects. By exploring our shadow, we can access many positive qualities, including natural instincts, appropriate reactions, realistic insights, and creative impulses. The shadow is not necessarily always an opponent. In fact, he is exactly like any human being with whom one has to get along sometimes by giving in, sometimes by resisting, sometimes by giving love, whatever the situation requires. The shadow becomes hostile only when he is ignored or misunderstood. The shadow contains various qualities, strengths, and potentials that, if left unexplored, lead to a state of impoverishment in our personality. This creates unconscious snags that hinder the development and expression of these positive qualities that lie dormant in our psyche. For example, someone might equate assertiveness with rudeness or aggression, thereby losing the qualities of confidence and the ability to speak up honestly and respectfully. This can result in decreased proactivity, making it harder to get a raise or job promotion leading to financial struggles and so on. When such a person encounters someone assertive, they may feel deep-seated, resentment and guilt further darkening and densifying their shadow. These valuable aspects should be integrated into actual experience rather than repressed. It is up to the ego to relinquish its pride. We also encounter our shadow in our dreams as a person of the same sex as the dreamer. It is what seems to be a criticism of our character from the unconscious, an inner judge of our own being that reproaches us, and the result is usually an embarrassed silence. We must identify the contents of the shadow and integrate them into our personality. This is the process of the realization of the shadow, also known as shadow work. Here begins the painful and lengthy work of self-education. One must enter into long and difficult negotiations with the shadow, a work that is the psychological equivalent of the labors of Hercules through shadow work. One can observe one's shadow outwardly by watching one's emotional reactions and being radically honest about one's interactions with others, and inwardly by exploring one's dreams, this approach enables one to achieve enlightenment and diminishes the shadow's destructive potential not by fighting the darkness, but by illuminating it and integrating it with the light. There is no light without shadow and no psychic wholeness without imperfection. Rather than striving for perfection, one should aim for wholeness of personality. The lifelong process of individuation balances the conscious and unconscious realms aligning the ego with the self. The entirety of one's personality confronting our shadow may be frightening or dark, but discovering the truth brings relief discernment. 
of truth is the path to authenticity, involving a meticulous exploration of our being to uncover possibilities and limitations, distortions, and the buried or forgotten aspects of ourselves and abilities. Unfortunately, most people are too lazy to deeply consider even the conscious moral aspects of their behavior, much less how the unconscious influences them. The shadow can also consist of fact factors. That stem from a source outside the individual's personal life. Here is when we stumble upon the collective shadow, the dark side or the unknown or little-known aspects of a society and culture. It consists of that which opposes our shared and collective values. The collective shadow refers to a huge, multidimensional, often horrifying, yet elusive aspect of human life, to an immensity of harm inflicted by human beings upon each other and the natural world, and to the vast after-effects of such harm in subsequent generations, we find the collective shadow in the projection of darkness and inferiority and violence and oppression, in the invisibility of current suffering in the denial of current responsibility, while the collective shadow may manifest brutally in wars, massacres, and genocides, it can also be concealed. Under seemingly benign activities such as enforcing the use of specific languages, reflecting an Orwellian reality that we experience today, the nature of shadow material, whether individual or collective, is such that its presence and influence can be widespread without being immediately apparent. The collective shadow manifests outwardly in atrocities, persecution, physical suffering, sickness, poverty, malnutrition, alcoholism crime, the death of cultures, and more. It can also manifest inwardly within the complexities of each individual psyche as self-hatred, hatred of one's heritage in culture, depression, feelings of impotence, and a desire for revenge. The collective shadow is what has historically been labeled evil in the Christian tradition. It would be the devil, and someone who is possessed by the devil loses his human quality and acquires a demon nature. Our primary response to evil must be the quest for self-knowledge for wholeness, which presumes the assimilation of shadow material. The individual must know relentlessly how much good he can do and what crimes he is capable of when there is an issue known in a particular society. It can be called a shadow issue if there is evidence of denial projection and a lack of taking individual and collective responsibility. Therefore, taking responsibility is particularly crucial. The courage with which we bear our darkness frees others from having to carry it for us. For example, when responding to instances of massive historical suffering such as wars, genocides, holocausts, and pervasive oppression, the effects of which continue to persist, we have much to learn as human beings. Denial often linked to a desire to move on and leave the past behind, is the most common and immediate reaction. There have been numerous attempts to address difficult and painful pasts through public apologies for supporting atrocities, acts of repentance, reparation payments after wars, pilgrimages to sites of great suffering and more remembering and speaking about what often seems unspeakable is inevitably a painful process for victims, perpetrators, bystanders, and witnesses. Such a process can only be considered successful or reasonably complete once the pain outrage, betrayal, suffering, and all other emotions have been expressed and heard and responsibility has been acknowledged. Truth-telling is both the most desirable and the most effective way to come to terms with a difficult past. It is important to solve one's inner conflicts first so that one does not fall into the collective shadow unconsciously, one may then later influence other people, and society would be better off as a whole by practicing mindfulness. We can deeply examine the nature of war, and through our insights awaken others to help prevent the repetition of such horrors. The war exists within us and within everyone else. Everything is poised to explode, and we all share responsibility. Think about the unconscious patterns that unfold in your life. How often do you act out of habit or find yourself procrastinating for no apparent reason? It is quite possible that these recurring behaviors are manifestations of our shadow. Consider how by integrating our shadow, we become less likely to project our dark aspects onto the world and others. Observe how frequently this occurs globally 
and how many of the world's problems are directly caused by this type of shadow projection. Disproportionate blame, generalizations about entire groups, and scapegoating. All these are forms of shadow projection, representing one of the deepest existing psychic disturbances. The shadow is not only a personal phenomenon, but also a collective one. There is a collective shadow of humanity, a shadow of nations. We witnessed this collective shadow overflowing into toxic behaviors and the atrocities of war. Thus, this concept applies both on an individual and a collective level. Individuation is not an exact science, but it is generally divided into four or five phases. The first is the transition from a life dominated by the ego and persona to shadow work, exploring the unknown parts of the mind. The second step involves finding and integrating the feminine or masculine aspects of the psyche. This is followed by a symbolic encounter with the wise old archetype culminating in the unification of these elements into a whole identifying with the self, a kind of collective consciousness. This process is rich in symbolism and archetypes, but also full of practical and applicable wisdom. The shadow specifically is a complex territory full of nuances and layers that we could explore extensively. But my goal now is to focus on the practical aspect. It is crucial to start with a specific mindset, a commitment to remain curious and serious about your own mind, normalizing the exploration of your thoughts and behaviors in practice. This means being attentive whenever the urge to repress. Emotions arises. Experiencing an emotional outburst feeling triggered or repeating harmful behavior patterns. It is essential to resolve to be conscious in these moments, striving to be aware when these reactions occur, in attempting to trace your behaviors to their origins, understand that this is not a simple process, and you will rarely find all the answers immediately, but it is an essential disposition to have a central technique is active imagination. This approach involves a direct dialogue with the unconscious navigating through it, using images, symbols, and visualizations. In this process, a specialized therapist guides and stimulates the expression of the unconscious, allowing you to perceive aspects of yourself that would be inaccessible alone, more than that a qualified therapist will lead you to. Uncomfortable territories encouraging the manifestation of these shadow elements in an environment free of judgment and censorship. This method offers deep insights into hidden content. It may sound abstract, and this leads us to ask, where do these unconscious materials come from? What are the images you focus on during this process? This brings us to the next point, the second method for exploring the shadow is dream analysis or dream work dreams, are crucial sources of information from the unconscious, providing clues about the shadow. This involves focusing on dream images, deciphering symbols, motifs, and themes to uncover unconscious or shadow material. For example, imagine a dream with enigmatic figures, intense emotions like fear, or even the sensation of unusual power. The shadow tries to communicate symbolically with the conscious part of the mind. In all these cases, these dreams are more than mere images. They are portals to a vast reservoir of unconscious information, a kind of root system of data hidden beneath the surface of the dream image. This leads us to the third method which addresses capturing this information. The third method for exploring the shadow involves regularly Capturing information in a journal, a practice known as reflective writing. This essentially includes keeping dream journals. It is important to record the images and messages from the unconscious present in dreams, doing so immediately upon waking and with as much detail as possible, even the smallest ones which may prove significant reflective writing. However goes beyond dreams, it encompasses recording. Daily thoughts and feelings over time— this habit allows you to identify emerging patterns, offering a window into the hidden wisdom in our behaviors and emotions. This practice requires honesty and the willingness to face fears, doubts, and prejudices, as well as recognizing positive aspects. Let's now talk about meditation and why it is an effective tool in shadow work. Meditation helps us develop mental clarity. 
It allows us to tune into our inner world, bringing a clearer view of the unconscious parts of our mind. Although it may not be completely possible to visualize the unconscious with total clarity, any improvement in understanding its origins and manifestations in our conscious mind is incredibly valuable. When I say meditation, I am referring to various practices, but in this context, I am specifically talking about the act of honestly observing one's own thoughts, being a witness to mental activity. This can include focusing on causes of anxiety, depression, negative feelings, or conversely, moments of strength and confidence over time. This exercise leads us back to the underlying unconscious processes. Additionally, I firmly believe that working with plant medicines and visionary molecules can be extremely relevant in this field. There is a reason why the term psychedelic literally translates to mind manifestation. That these substances have the ability to bring to the surface aspects of our mind that we are normally unaware of. They reveal things we prefer to forget, regrets, unexpressed gratitude, and much more. Of course, this is not an exhaustive list. In fact, I do not consider this an exact science. There is generally no definitive technique for assimilating the shadow. It is more a process that resembles diplomacy or the art of governance. Personal karma encompasses the individual's own actions, choices, and behaviors that have consequences on their psychological well-being in the realm of shadow work. Personal karma involves examining one's past actions and their impact on the present. This includes exploring instances of self-sabotage, destructive habits, or harmful patterns of behavior that may be rooted in unconscious elements of the shadow interpersonal karma takes the idea of personal karma and applies it to relationships and social interactions. It involves analyzing the patterns that arise in relationships, whether they are romantic, familial, or platonic unresolved aspects of the shadow can manifest as recurring. Conflicts, challenges, or difficulties in forming healthy connection s with others. Shadow work encourages individuals to explore how their unconscious beliefs and behaviors influence interpersonal dynamics, fostering a deeper understanding of themselves and promoting more fulfilling relationships. Ancestral karma delves into the idea that unconscious patterns and unresolved issues can be inherited from one's ancestors. The experiences and traumas of previous generations could leave an imprint on the collective unconscious, influencing the psyche of subsequent generations in shadow work. Individuals explore their ancestral lineage to identify and address patterns that may have been passed down through generations. Cultural and societal karma involves the collective influences and expectations that shape individual behavior and beliefs. Society often imposes norms and values that individuals internalize, leading to the suppression of certain aspects of the shadow work. In this context requires a critical examination of cultural conditioning and societal expectations. Archetypal karma explores the influence of universal symbols and archetypes on the individual psyche. Archetypes are universal patterns that reside in the collective unconscious and shape human experiences in shadow work. Individuals may encounter archetypes, figures in dreams, fantasies, or visions that offer insights into the deeper layers of the psyche. Exploring archetypal karma involves understanding how these universal patterns impact personal development. The shadow work begins with cultivating awareness an intentional and mindful exploration of the various layers of one's consciousness. Cultivating awareness involves developing a keen sense of observation, turning attention inward to explore the thoughts, emotions, and behaviors that often operate below the surface of conscious awareness. This practice requires a commitment to self-reflection and a genuine curiosity about the intricacies of the psyche, incorporating moments of daily reflection into one's routine. Fosters ongoing awareness, taking time to review the events of the day, noting emotional responses and identifying patterns in thought thoughts and behaviors, enhances self-awareness, 
Regular reflection provides valuable insights into the workings of the mind and offers a starting point for inviting the shadow into conscious awareness. Active imagination is a technique that involves a deliberate and conscious engagement with the contents of the unconscious through the use of imagination and visualization. During active imagination, individuals intentionally focus their attention on the images, thoughts, and emotions that emerge from the depths of the psyche. The process typically begins by relaxing the mind and entering a meditative or contemplative state in this state. Individuals allow their minds to wander freely, observing the spontaneous images and thoughts that arise. The key is to actively participate in these mental images rather than passively observing them. Active imagination often leads to encounters with symbolic representations that may include figures, landscapes, or scenarios. These symbols hold significance and are considered manifestations of unconscious content. Engaging with these symbols in a purposeful manner allows individuals to explore the messages and insights encoded within the shadow through active imagination. Individuals can establish a direct and dynamic dialogue with the shadow by actively engaging with the symbolic representations they facilitate a bridge between the conscious and unconscious aspects of the psyche. This intentional exploration contributes to the integration of unconscious material into conscious awareness, fostering a more comprehensive understanding of the self-creative visualization begins with the cultivation of a vivid and detailed mental image. Individuals utilize their imagination to create an inner landscape where they can encounter symbolic representations of the shadow. This imaginative exploration provides a platform for Conscious interaction with unconscious material. This conscious focus shapes the trajectory of the visualization, allowing for a targeted exploration of the shadow creative visualization often leads to the identification of unresolved conflicts, unhealed wounds, or persistent tensions within the shadow. These elements may be represented through symbolic images, scenarios, or interactions, recognizing these. Unresolved aspects is a crucial step in the symbolic resolution process. Inner alchemy utilizes symbolic imagery to represent the transformative process within the psyche. This may include visualizing the symbolic stages of alchemy, such as dissolution, purification, and coagulation, as metaphors for the psychological transformation of the shadow understanding and integrating the shadow necessitates a Deep exploration of emotions and feelings that may have been repressed, overlooked, or misunderstood. Focusing on the feeling begins with a mindful awareness of emotions as they arise. This involves paying close attention to the nuances of emotional experiences without immediately seeking to categorize, judge, or suppress them. Mindful awareness allows individuals to be fully present with their emotions creating a foundation for a more profound understanding of the inner landscape. The next step is to identify and name emotions. This process involves recognizing the specific emotions involved, whether they are joy, sadness, anger, fear, or a more complex mix of feelings by clearly identifying and labeling these emotions individuals, gain greater clarity about the underlying dynamics of their internal Experiences focusing on the feeling involves exploring the triggers that provoke specific emotional responses. These triggers may stem from past experiences, unresolved traumas, or patterns embedded in the unconscious. By examining the roots of emotional reactions, individuals uncover valuable insights into the shadow aspects associated with particular feelings. A crucial element of focusing on the feeling is cultivating a non judgmental stance toward emotions. Instead of labeling emotions as good or bad individuals, approach them with curiosity and acceptance. Letting the feeling be is a complementary aspect of the shadow work process that involves allowing emotions to unfold without immediate attempts to control, suppress, or manipulate them. This step encourages a sense of receptivity and acceptance, enabling individuals to witness and experience their emotions fully. Letting the feeling be requires a practice of radical acceptance and unconditional acknowledgement of emotions without resistance. 
It involves embracing the reality of the present emotional experience without attempting to change or deny it. Radical acceptance fosters an attitude of openness and surrender to the flow of emotions often carry an innate need for expression. Letting the feeling be involves allowing emotions to express themselves naturally. Whether through tears, laughter, or other forms of emotional release, this authentic expression facilitates the processing of emotions and contributes to a sense of emotional well-being. The silent witness is an inner observer, a detached and non-judgmental aspect of the self that can witness thoughts, emotions, and experiences without becoming entangled in them. The silent witness involves cultivating an inner observer consciousness. This inner presence remains detached from the fluctuations of thoughts and emotions, providing a vantage point from which individuals can witness the activities of the mind without getting lost in them by stepping back and observing the stream of thoughts without judgment. Individuals gain insight into the narratives and beliefs that may be influencing their behavior. The silent witness goes beyond the ego's identification with the self. It is a higher aspect of consciousness that exists independently of the ego's narratives and self-definitions. By accessing this transcendent perspective, individuals can separate themselves from ego-driven reactions, fostering a more liberated and expansive experience of the self. We must first acknowledge our personal shadow and enter into long and difficult negotiations with it being honest with ourselves and our interactions with others. Watching our emotional reactions actions, and exploring our dreams in order to not become passive victims of our shadow and our unconscious projections. This allows us to rescue the good, qualities that lie dormant within us. Improving our lives and the lives of those around us, we can then become consciously aware of the collective shadow, avoiding its influence, and take responsibility to address the denial of important issues and the lack of individual and collective initiative bearing our Darkness with courage brings relief to others, as telling the truth is the most effective way to confront a difficult past. This approach prevents the dismissal of atrocities which would otherwise allow the shadow to grow darker and lead to the repetition of history's mistakes.